So I published a book when I was 14, and today I have something to say about it. Here's why you should not do that and write fanfiction instead. Roll the tape. So when I was a kid, I loved writing. Well, maybe not quite more than drawing, but I liked both a whole lot. Like, possibly encroaching into special interest, I might be autistic territory, but that's a conversation and specialist appointment for a different time. My point is, I really like words, and I knew one day that more than anything else in the entire world, I really, really wanted to write a book. And I was lucky enough to be a kid with parents who supported stuff like that. Not a whole lot of kids get that kind of support they gave me, and I'm really grateful for that. So when I was in, like, kindergarten and already reading at a first grade level while everyone else was still, like, learning the alphabet, total flex, I know, let's just not look at the math side of things, I was already coming up with stories. I think it was first grade when this little event first came around called the Young Authors Conference that meant all the kids from a bunch of schools could write a story and get together and share them. I forgot if there were like awards or anything. I don't think there were. But if there was a medal or something to win, I didn't really care. I just wanted to write my story and have a captive audience. So this is where we get into the fact that I had no idea how to practice writing. In my defense, I was six or five, I don't remember. But this was my first real serious attempt at constructing a story and little baby me took it so seriously. I basically just wrote a children's book about like the value of family over wealth and material possessions or whatever, something like, some basic moral like that. Only a few pages long and like barely a few sentences per page, but it was really cute. And I genuinely think that was the best bit of writing I would do for years, like on the basis of a children's book. The thing is, writing a full story is a lot harder than it seems, especially for a kid. I must have started like 20 different stories after that by the time I hit middle school. The little baby had the right idea. Start tiny, have a minuscule little project goal, and work up slowly in size as you finish those tiny projects. But no, I wanted to write a whole novel. And I knew right away that it had to be fantasy too. I even wrote this horrible little short story about two dragons and got it like printed at a little print shop into one of those little paper booklets because my mom is super cool and anyway. Fast forward many, many, many years. I'm 13 and I get an invitation to write a story for an indie anthology. This was right up my alley too because it was like twisted fairy tales or like that's what it was called at least. There was this rule about how it had to have no magic or fantasy elements to it and I was like what? What's the point of a dark like twisted fairy tale if it can't have magic and fantasy in it? And I have a 10,000 word limit? What the heck man that's like barely anything for a story. But I did it. And they lifted the word limit later because of course they did. But I wrote a really cool story, or at least I thought it was really cool at the time, about Rumpelstiltskin, except like it was the mafia. Um, no, I'm not elaborating because that little story isn't even the point I'm trying to get to. And we'd be here all day if I tried to explain how I got to that. But like, that was my first actual taste of finishing a story and having someone else like it. Like, like it enough that they accepted me for the anthology, and that was addicting. So immediately, I went from short story to full-length 90,000 word fantasy novel because that's a logical jump, and I'd had a glimpse into what the indie publishing world was like. I was starstruck, awed. I had the world in front of me, and only had to reach out and grab it. And my parents were behind me the whole way, so I had boundless confidence in myself, and It sucked. Now, everyone in my life told me that my first book didn't suck. But like, not to sound mean, but don't trust your family's opinions. They will always, if they're a good family anyway, they'll always tell you that you did a good job and it's awesome and keep writing. 
And honestly, don't trust your friends <laughs> or any other people who read your book and like no other book ever or the indie author community. I'm sorry guys, you're all super cool and there are a lot of legitimately good books and like I did get a lot of good advice, don't get me wrong, but the majority of them were in my position also, like they were writing their first books, so it was kind of like a like a peer review situation except nobody knew what they were talking about. <laughs> but, so come on, like Sometimes your tastes are a little wacky if you think this is an example of good writing. So, anyway, here's the deal. I have three mm -hmm. self-published books up for sale on Amazon through Kindle Direct Publishing. They're mm -hmm. still published and I've thought about taking them down, but nope, they're still up there. Am I proud of them? All this blood, sweat, and tears I poured into these books, all the passion and the drive and the time. Absolutely not, not even a little bit. I'm proud of myself for pushing through and doing so much work, of course. Like, like I'm proud of the work that I did to get them up there, and just not the final product. Like, that was a big workload for a kid. I mean, I published the first one when I was like, 14? 15, I think? I was... I don't remember exactly, but it was right there in that range. And then the last one when I was 17. And no one can take that accomplishment away from me. It was huge, and it's still kind of huge. But I will say, when you're that young and you don't really know what you're doing yet, consider not putting it up where everyone can see it and then, like, asking money for it because it will be so far from your best work that even if everyone else says it's great, you will take one look at it and feel so much shame you want to puke. Now, I'm not saying kids can't make stuff that's worth money. They absolutely can, and they do every day. Heck, there are super young authors out there writing wildly successful books, even like the one I was trying to write. So, it's definitely not impossible. But for everyone else out there, the ones like me, the ones who are in that much bigger percentage of the population of nerdy kids who think they can make it big, slow down. Take a breath. It's okay. It felt to me like there was always a deadline that I had to accomplish all these big things before I hit my late teens or the horror, my twenties. Or else I would miss my chance to be one of those prodigy kids all the adults took seriously. But the fact is, there is absolutely no shame in taking some time and polishing your skills, especially if you want to take that passion you have and really make it work. Sure, if you really, really want to see if you can make this work in your teens, there's nothing I can do to stop you. And hey, maybe you'll have that spark that'll get you through it. Maybe you can be better than me. I bet you can. <laughs> Lots of people are. But speaking from my personal experience, there's no harm in just calming down, and taking things slow. When I look back at those self-published books that I put all my heart and soul into, I hate them. They killed my motivation to write for a while because I didn't even want to deal with my association to them anymore. And if it hadn't been in the public eye, maybe I wouldn't have felt that way. Maybe I could have even rewritten them before they ever saw the public and made them into something I could truly be proud of. Because I love those settings and those characters and my ideas, I just didn't have the skills to execute them correctly. But now I have to deal with the fact that they were self-published, and even if I did take them off shelves and rewrite the whole thing, it'd be an even bigger toss-up than it already is to get an agent to accept the idea of getting it published, and I haven't even managed that with my current project yet. So. What do I suggest instead for the feedback-hungry teenager looking to practice their craft and put themselves out there? Well, what else than fanfiction? I know fanfic kind of has a reputation around these parts, but look, fanfiction is a fantastic creative outlet and a low-stress way to practice writing with something you already love. Your audience is pretty much guaranteed, given you have an active and alive fandom to write for. And you have characters, settings, and even some plot lines already written out for you. 
I feel like I've had this exact conversation in a video before, like I'm getting major deja vu, but it, seriously, I'll say it again. If you're struggling, or if you want to one day put your work out there, start with fanfiction. Ask someone to beta for you. Ask for genuine constructive criticism. Ask where readers are getting bored or confused. And always, always, always be open to that criticism, because that is where you're going to get your growth from. Fanfiction is like a cure-all for the difficulties of original writing. All your world building is done for you and everyone is already intimately familiar and holds affection for the characters you're using, so all you have to do is jump into the sandbox and play. That's what I did during my Tangled the Series obsession, I just jumped straight in and <laughs> decide to rewrite the entire show from movie to finale episode, but you don't have to go that far. Trust me, I, I, I don't really recommend it. <laughs> 200,000 words of Tangled is a lot for even even as someone obs as obsessed as I was. But like seriously, the amount I improved over that fic? Intense. I'm pretty sure you could still read that fanfiction and tell where I was improving. And all while feeding my whatever obsession I had going on with the concept of Moon Varian at the time. I'm telling you, I was in the trenches. I still am sometimes when it relapses. <laughs> But, like, fanfiction is the best. You get instant feedback as you write, you get to feed a thriving fandom and be one of those creators people look up to and write thank you posts about on Tumblr. You can be one of those people. And the best part? It's free. No paying for editing and cover art and formatting and all of that junk because you just upload that Google Doc to AO3 and bam, done. People can read and enjoy it and give their honest, internet, unfiltered feedback on it. And trust me, that is the best way to figure out what you're doing. It's like opening your third eye when you can tell what everyone is thinking as you put down each chapter. I cannot thank fanfiction enough for everything it did for me. And I still read it sometimes, like, not mine, I read other people's, and it's really good. After I finally finished that Tangled Fix series, I started working on my current project, which is called The Crimson Circle, for now. I finished three books and was only about 10,000 words away from the word goal for the fourth. Do you believe that? I've basically written like seven books at that point, and I just turned 19. I'd written... man, I'd written over like a million words by now. That's mind-boggling when you think about it. And I'm just now confident enough in my work that I could pitch it to a literary agent. Like, it took that much. But that's not all. Because I started working at, like, you know, a job, which absolutely killed my creative process for a whole year. But then I started writing again and went through and edited the entire thing to change some stuff, decided I didn't like that, and around September of last year, I decided to chuck the whole thing out the window and rewrite it. A rash decision? Yeah, maybe! But you know what? Through all the pain it caused, I've learned something. When you're a writer, you have to know when it's time to throw stuff out and restart. You're not going to hit your winner in the first story, or the second, or likely your tenth attempt, but you will eventually hit your stride. You'll figure out your process and your craft, and you'll do it. I just finished my first Crimson Circle book a month ago, the rewritten one, I think, and I'm working on my second. And this is the first original series I've had a solid, well-made plan for. I know how the plot goes, I know my voice, I know my characters inside and out, and I think my writing style is pretty dang good after like a million words trying to figure it out. So I guess my point is, don't rush yourself, especially if you're young. Draw those OCs and write those scene ideas you just can't get out of your head, and then write tons and tons of fanfiction. Or if fanfic isn't really your scene, just do Wattpad original fiction or have little for fun projects you share with your friends. Don't do what I did and get overzealous and jump in or get serious too fast because that is the fastest way to kill your self-confidence and motivation, at least in my experience. There's no shame in going slower and there's never any shame in writing quote-unquote cringy stuff. 
It's the same concept as any art. You're not going to be a master when you first start, especially if you never consume any of your chosen art in the first place. That's another thing. I see all you chumps thinking you can write a good book and not read. I don't care if you have ADHD or whatever. I probably do too. But you can listen to an audiobook or something. But I beg of you, if you want to write, please read, even if you have to have someone else read to you. You cannot play a guitar like a boss without listening to guitar music. You cannot learn the techniques of art without looking at other artists, or at the very least without sitting and studying all the beautiful things you could draw. You cannot be a chef if you don't taste good food. And even if you could, you shouldn't. Burnout happens so much easier when all you're doing for something is creating with nothing but your own brain power. Inspiration is not a bad thing to take. And even if you're not directly taking inspiration from something, you're learning new things that you never would have thought of before. You get that reader experience. You get to know what you do and don't like to read, what your readers might feel like in that situation. It's an integral part of the creative process. You don't think the makers of Mario never looked at other video games, do you? You think the first video game ever, like Pong or something, was the pinnacle of all gaming? Humans build off each other. It's what we do. Don't be ashamed of doing that. Feed your creative soul sometimes. It needs the energy. So, I guess to sum it up, pursue your dreams like a tortoise. Slow and steady really does win the race here. Don't be ashamed to do something badly, especially at first. Even though I just went off on a whole tangent about my own shame, but that's because I put it in the public eye. Don't do that. And be patient with yourself to really put the time and energy in that your craft deserves. And if you're not a writer, if you're just here for the discourse and advice, it still applies to you in whatever you might be pursuing in life. Take it from me, rushing things never leads to anything good. Your ideas are worth time. Give it to them. Or maybe you're just here for the painting in the background and wondering why I'm changing art styles again. Yeah, I know, so am I, buddy. So am I. But hey, I don't hate it, and she does kind of have the vibe I was going for. This is Ama Coulson, by the way. She's one of my Crimson Circle villains, and I just think she's neat. If you have any silly stories about your projects, please do share. I know I've been kind of sucky about replying to comments recently, I've, I've been in a real bad rut with YouTube, but I do honestly want to hear about any other authors on a similar boat, or even those who write fanfiction and find value in that. Don't be shy, s share your story, or just tell me how silly I was to publish a book at 15 and expect it to go anywhere. I deserve it. If you want to see more art I do for myself or art from older videos, I occasionally post my Instagram under the same name. Drop by and see if that's something you want to follow. If you like this video, well, like it so I know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what might work on this channel right now, so the spontaneity, spot, spontaneity, spot, spot, spontaneity. The crazy will calm down if you guys tell me what you like. <laughs> and if you have any interest at all in what I'm currently writing, um, let me know because I have no idea how to share it with you all in a way you'd enjoy it, but. I really, really want to because I'm not getting any replies from literary agents and I don't know how long it's going to be until it's published. As always, thank you so much for watching, especially all the way to the end. If you had fun here today, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. A second of your time helps more than you know and I'm grateful for everyone. With that said, I'm Lexicon and I'll see you next time.